Today in the bunker, we're going to build and paint some brick buildings suitable for the wasteland. I recently acquired uh, five of these Ameritown building kits. Um, these are fantastic if you want to make a sort of a downtown slash business area. Um, they've got a nice brick texture, and most of them are two-story. One of them, I think, is a three-story. This series is still in print. Um, these basic two-story ones are about 50 bucks a piece. Uh, I got these for 24 which is, you know, I, I tend to not pay full sticker for these, but even, even at that price, they're comparable, the full price, they're comparable to a lot of the other kits that are out there, and they may be even more versatile. So let's, um, let's bust one open and see what we've got. So inside, we've got some instructions. Uh, we've got some inserts for the windows. We can, those are optional to use those. And then we've got the building itself, which these bits, they're pretty thick. This is a, they're very sturdy. I'll give them that. And you can kind of kit bash these and make things that weren't originally, you know, sort of on the box. You can, you can make way bigger buildings than, than are in here if you combine these kits. So I'm going to prep these pieces and then we'll start gluing them together. A lot of the pieces have some little flash bits or where it came off of a sprue kind of thing. And those are pretty easy to clean up. This plastic is thick, but it's not overly hard. So just take your time, neaten up every join you can. One of the warnings I will give about these kits is they're a little bit fiddly in the way they go together as far as lining things up. Some of the wall sections, you can glue a top and bottom together and lay them down and they'll line up perfectly. Other bits like this top piece here, this, all this Cornish work and stuff, um, that does not. You kind of have to glue it and then hold it together until it sets because if you lay this down, these tabs will raise this part up and it'll be misaligned. So not a huge thing, but just something to be aware of. This one's fiddly enough, I went ahead and just used painter's tape once I had it lined up to try and hold it where I wanted it, and then I would just wick the glue in from the front and the back, and we're going to give that a little bit of time to set up. I'm using Plastrux cement, but this stuff takes pretty much, I think, any of the plastic cements pretty well. The joins between the top and bottom pieces can be a bit odd. Um, because these kits, these pieces are used in several kits. They just kind of mix and match them uh, to make whatever. But like this one has this bevel in here. So it makes getting a perfect join kind of tricky because part of it is going to be hanging off into space. So what I'm going to do is I will glue it to the sidewalls because they engage that tab. And that way you can make a 90 degree join and get the rest of the building put together with using the also the back bottom piece. And then you can glue your top pieces on and they should be fairly square. Just take your time. Here's where the, the lines on your hobby mat, if you have this kind with the lines, can come in handy because you can easily square that up when you glue it and then just hold it until it sets if you need to. All right, so once you've got it to this stage, um, let it firm up really well. Uh, let it dry for probably another 20 minutes or so, so that it's, because this literally welds the plastic together. And once it's set, it's extremely strong. Um, one of the things I did discover in the process of doing this is when you put the pieces on, I put some glue right by where the tab is. I'll put three fairly heavy dots. That way it doesn't evaporate by the time you press it on where it needs to be. And it'll start to set right there. And then you can go back and wick it in along the seam inside and out. Don't do too much on the outside, you'll melt your brick, but um, in the end, you will have a very, very strong building. While our first building is drying, uh, let's take a look at this one that I had previously assembled just to get the technique down. One of the things I've done is both sections of wall have these little tabs, and I took some basswood or some balsa wood stock and just cut some little pieces and glued them on top of there because 
I wanted to add a floor section that'll fit in there. And I'll add a piece of wall or something just so I can lift it out and it won't be too fiddly. That way you can make the interior of your building playable, which is entirely optional. Um, I also cut a floor section, which we will glue on. And in days past, I would have hit this with sanding sealer. Now I just paint it. It's It doesn't need to be that bulletproof. Um, your mileage may vary. Also, there is a roof section that slots in here very nicely. We're going to add some um, HVAC equipment to the top so we can lift it off easily. And again, that's optional. You know, if you weren't going to make the building playable inside, you could just glue it down and, and it would be fine. And to glue the floor piece on, I'm just going to use some Eileen's Tacky 2 PVA. You could use hot glue. You could use super glue. Um, you know, it's just like you don't have to use chipboard for this. You could use MDF or whatever you wanted or just not have a floor and that would be fine. I was going to glue the floor on and then realized we have all of these windows to mess with and there's some clear plastic that comes in the kit or you can use some regular acetate, probably a little more heavy duty, I would advise that, but um, it'll be 10 times easier to do it if the floor is not in. So the floor is going to be the last step. All right, so I used some 3D printed HVAC bits and I'll link to that file in the description. I just got it off of Thingiverse. Um, and it's it's not a bad print at all, especially once you paint it up and make it a little rusty. Looks pretty good. And then the floor, I just post or uh, glued a tab right there, just out of some foam core. I put glue on all of the exposed edges because we're going to paint that. But uh, that way you can just kind of slide that in there, maybe get it in the right spot and then it goes right in so you can make your building a little more playable if you want or if you don't want to worry about it just glue all that in place and call it good in the instructions was a suggestion to kind of utilize the color that it's molded in and hit it with a matte varnish and i think um, that's what i'm going to use i've already put the matte varnish on it i'm going to go back and paint all of the trim I'm going to dry brush this brick, and I may try a white oil wash, which is a crazy idea. Let's see if we can bring out the mortar lines. If not, hopefully the dry brushing will do it. Um, I did get the HVAC equipment on the roof and primed all that black and primed the underside black along with the floor. And then the bottom floor is also black. We'll glue that on last. So let's tinker with this brickwork a little bit and uh, see what we can achieve. And when you get ready to paint the buildings, um, in this case, I've, I found that in order to do the bricks, it works best with an oil wash using white oil paint. However, it's kind of problematic if you want to do any of the stonework in a different color, and especially if you want to shade it, um, you should do that first. So that's what I've done. I've gone ahead and painted my alternate colors. In this case, I put some brush on primer on those areas and then went over that with a tan and then the green and used some Army Painter Strong Tone to kind of age them and dirty them up a little bit. The rest of the building is hit with uh, some matte varnish and that'll help uh, allow the oil wash to spread the way it needs to. English is hard. So what I'm going to use is just a little of this turpenoid. I've got a little pipette here. And we'll mix that up and make that into a wash. And a little bit of experimentation, you'll, you'll get it to where you can kind of eyeball the mix when it's the consistency that you want it. See, like I've got some down in here. You don't want it too thin because then you won't really get any color. And likewise, you don't want it too thick. Although the advantage of the oil wash technique is that you can go back later with some turpentine. Once it's dried, you can take some turpentine on like a cotton swab or a rag and kind of remove the parts that you don't want. So I'm going to load up my brush here. And we'll just go... 
find a good spot and just do that and it'll just capillary action will kind of take it wherever it needs to go as far as in between the bricks and if you get a little heavy in some places it's no big deal um, like I said you can go back later once it's once it's dried you can go back and fix that but aged brick a lot of times gets that kind of white sort of uh, powdery finish to it so it may come out exactly the way you need it to so just uh, take your time, go around, do that, and uh, you should get a pretty nice brick effect, especially once it's dried. One thing I do want to note, um, my intent was to take some clear plastic and make windows, and I'm still going to do that. It didn't make it into the video because there was already about a three-week gap in there. I just wanted to get it done so I could get it posted and you guys could see it. So uh, I'll probably highlight these buildings again later once they're kind of done with some more glass in them, um, probably some graffiti and whatnot. So if nothing else, they'll show up at least in a game report. All right, so here's the first one I did to test the technique, but I think it came out really well. Um, even at a fair distance away from the table, you can look and your eye tells you, hey, that thing's brick. The, uh, the roof part... I just did, uh, I just sort of airbrushed the whole thing kind of a gray color after I primed it black and then just went progressively lighter into the center of the panels and then just did a black oil wash and where it kind of slops over, it looks like moisture. So that sort of works for you and uh, added our 3D printed um, air conditioner and that's just a very very uh, dark brown it's like a burnt umper with some gunmetal brushed on it and then I used a little bit of raw sienna just to kind of highlight the rust and all in all it comes out fairly well I think it gives you a pretty good impression so hopefully that is useful to you guys I hope you enjoyed it um, I hope this inspires you to do some brick work and I hope you guys have a fantastic day Today in the bunker, well, we're outside the bunker, we're having shoshlik.